All right, Riley. Riley, uh, where are you from originally? Where did you grow up? I was born in Renton, Washington. About 20 minutes outside of Seattle. Okay. And tell me about your family. My family. Uh, my mom was divorced once uh, and then remarried to my dad. I had two step uh, siblings, a brother and a sister, and a full sister. I'm the youngest of all of them. Okay. And how was your childhood? Mm. My childhood was like um, very similar to everyone else's. Um, my parents tried, they put me in sports. Um, the one thing for me is like, I wasn't allowed to have friends over. I didn't have a, like a normal childhood in that aspect. Didn't have many friends. Uh, lived out in the woods, didn't see a lot of people. There wasn't a huge like population in my hometown or at my high school. Um, but I spent a lot of time with uh, probably my sister and one of my really good friends and playing sports. So pretty, pretty nice childhood, except for a little isolation. Um, as I got older, eight, nine, ten, closer to my teens, I started to realize my dad was, uh, what I now know as an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And it was getting really bad at that time. Oh. Uh, he wasn't around as much. He was only around if it was to forced me to play some kind of sport that he wanted me to play or control me in whatever he wanted to do. And so it was kind of weird in that, in that aspect. Any abuse or anything like that? Uh, yeah, well, of course, yeah. Um, like I said, I wasn't al allowed to have friends over. Um, didn't understand that, so I asked him why, at like 10, I asked my mom. My mom would be like, it's just your dad's rules. So one time I was like, hey, like, why am I not allowed to have friends over? And he just, don't ask me again why you're not allowed to have people over. I don't like my stuff being stolen. Or um, I don't like to have to watch after one of you. Why would I have to look after two of you? And I asked him again, he fucking, he hit me and he said, shut up, don't ask me again. <laughs> and um, so I didn't ask him again. <laughs> Uh, shit like that, yeah. He would, uh, I was physically, mostly verbally abused yeah. by him. And you, you left home at what age? As soon as I could at 18. 18, and where'd you go? I, w I moved in to my buddy Connor's house. My buddy Connor went to high school together. Me and a couple other friends, we moved in with him after uh, his dad was hit and killed by uh, uh, inebriated driver from our school, actually. It was pretty crazy. It was crazy. And then w drugs came in the picture for you at what, what point? Then. Right then? Right then. Yeah. It was just, uh, you know, party and weed, uh, fun parties up until I graduated. Actually, looking back on it, graduation day, I, I'd gotten pretty fucked up drunk pretty drunk and took some pills that day and with everyone from graduation. I'm like, that's not normal. Not everyone did that. I was nodding out uh, during graduation. And of course, I'd smoked weed and I was hoping my parents wouldn't notice. And that's not normal, you know what I mean? So 18, 19 is when that started. I started with pills. Um, I was always able to set pills down though. And I watched my buddy Connor, who I moved in with, that was the first time I realized that there was a thing called withdrawal. It was the first time I um, was shown what that was, was because he withdrawed and he was like, I can't do this anymore. He sat and withdrawed on his, on his couch, smoked weed, and went through a week of hell by himself. And I was like, hmm, like, I really don't want to touch that shit again, man, if that's what it does. This is crazy. So where did the drug situation go from there for you? So, oh, I, once I turned 19, I started experimenting with a lot of drugs. Uh, made a really good friend. His name was Noah, moved from Florida. 
we all know Florida is not the best place. Um, a lot of people there have been to rehab many times. There's a lot of rehabs there. There's a lot of different drugs there. So I started experimenting with pretty much every single drug there is. Um, I got back into doing a little bit of pills, Percocets. And um, one day we were looking for him. And he was like, just can't find him, man. I just can't find him. And I couldn't find him either. And I was like, shit, man, that sucks. And he was like, but I do know where to find like heroin. And I was like, what's that? And he was like, it's, it's a lot better than pills. I think you'll like it. And I was like, well, I'm, we might as well. Like, how much is it? And he was like 10 bucks. And I was like, what? We've been spending 30, man. <laughs> Let's go get it. And we picked it up and uh, I remember I took two or three hits of it off of a foil. And I was at the donut shop in Maple Valley, and I fell asleep, or I nodded out for three or four hours. And I remember after the first hit, man, it was like, this is what I was waiting for my whole life. This is, I feel fucking right. I feel like I fit in, and like, yeah, this is what I've been looking for. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I knew I was fucked. I knew it, and like... I knew it. I was like, this isn't good, but like, I'm willing to let everything go for this drug right now. I knew, I knew shit was going to go south from there. So that was 19? Yeah. And how old are you today? I'm 26. I turned 26 last week. 26. And you've been using it ever since? Well, no. I mean, I've had periods of sobriety, briefly. Uh, the most I've ever had was seven months. Oh, really? How'd you do that? Oh, Lord. I'm not sure. Um, obviously, working a program, going to meetings, having a sponsor, you know what I mean? The cliche sh stuff yeah. works. Um, I had a kid on the way. And uh, my baby's mom, we just recently broke up uh, three months ago or so. Uh, she was uh, clean at the time as well. And I thought it was time to buckle down then, and like I, it wasn't enough, you know. And so that's how I did that then treatment, initially, program and, and fellowship kept me clean, but the depression and the and the bipolar that I also have, um, it's been hard. I don't know. It's hard. I can't seem to maintain any type of positive sobriety and it's i've been to some fucking bad places because of this you know what i mean yeah places i never thought i would go coming from just a little rural <laughs> town called ravensdale washington being a little country boy wheeling with my friends every day to a full-blown heroin addict in fucking LA, it's yeah. good, bro. This is the worst part of it. It's so easy to score here, though. It's just easy for me, you know what I mean? What do you do for money now? Um, lately, it's been... <laughs> Who has access to, uh, to these videos? <laughs> I, I don't exactly want to say it. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot, of people, a lot of guys will do boosting, stealing. Yeah, no, I don't steal necessarily. Um, I might partake in fraudulent things. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't need to get into details. Yeah, and um, financially, sometimes I'm doing really well, but when I'm not, I'm really not. I have nothing, and it's really hard for me to make any money. Yeah. Um, there's always, like, recycling if I'm really fucking low and need to do something just to make a couple bucks. Right. Um, but normally people have my back. I mean, they're one step ahead and have financial means and, and ways, uh, usually fraudulently. And I used to steal, can't do it anymore. I would steal from my family, uh, steal from my girlfriends, steal from myself, stores, stupid. Yeah. What, what do you think most people don't realize about addiction? <laughs> I 
biggest one for me <clears throat> my baby's mom's family has a huge resentment um, and they're like how can you do all these things I've stolen from them you know what I mean and I've done some pretty poor things to my baby's mom or rather I've, I've done things that I'm not proud of and she didn't like and her family knows you know what I mean and they're like how can you do that you know, I just, I, I tell them that I literally do not recognize myself or that person that made those actions because I feel like I wouldn't do them. It's not who I really am. And what people don't realize about addiction is that if I don't have a means to get well or my drug, there's nothing that's going to stop that, that part of me that fucking needs that drug because it comes before everything. It doesn't matter. It will come before my son. My family, my my well-being, water, food, sleep, sex, anything. Yeah, some, someone told me recently it's, it becomes more important than survival. Exactly. That is it. That is survival. And, and that's how an addict's brain works, and it's just fucked. <laughs> that's why when commenters on my channel will say, oh, you just got to go to rehab and stop. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you probably have as much or more common sense than all the common sense that's being commented. But... It's not about common sense. It's really sad. It's sad that people think it's a choice or um, a decision. You know, they're just like, oh, it's sad they can't get their lives together. Well, man, it's sad that you're fucking even commenting on that and not helping that person because if you were in that position, would you not want help? Uh, it's something like 90% of addicts don't get help. I, I think it's 99% of addicts don't get help. And even though I've received help, it's never been enough for me to continue and, and keep a healthy life. Like I've been in, a, in and out of treatment 15 times and hopefully 16 today because I really want to go to treatment today and, and we're trying to set that up, which is weird that this happened, but um, I've been in and out 16 times and it's been the fucking hardest thing I've ever had to do. People don't understand that it is how fucking hard this shit is, man. And, and no matter what uh, my outside circumstances are, I, like I have a son, baby mama just got clean with me fucking four months ago. She broke up with me and has a new boyfriend. <laughs> like, she's clean. That's awesome. My son, not gonna be enough to keep me clean. Like, just because I have that responsibility and, and just because I want to doesn't mean, like, I'm gonna. It's fucked up. It's fucked. It's sad. It's like a curse that you can't shake. You think I can, man. I just, just, I don't, I gotta find something that works. Do you know what I'm saying? Did your... Do you think it's perhaps just your version of your dad's alcoholism that you're experiencing? No, I, I mean, I believe I'm an alcoholic too. I'm an alcoholic and an addict. Um, I do believe... Did your dad ever get clean? No. I do believe the way he raised me was not very... It wasn't a good start to life and how I should treat people. He didn't treat me very, he didn't give me like good values. He didn't show me shit. <laughs> Unless I fucked up, then he showed me that I fucked up, you know? Um, I, I do believe a lot of the negative traits he has like uh, narcissism and, and um, whatever, just being mean, man. <laughs> and an asshole and fucking, um, what is it? When you say don't do something and then you go do it. Oh, a hypocrite? Yeah. You know? And he, he hates liars. I grew up with a dad that hated liars and fuck, I turned into a liar quick. 
ever since I was young, like like six or seven. And then it turned into a um, habitual line with my last, uh, with my baby's mom. And I was in a fantasy world of lies and she knew that. And one day I, I got clean with her before I came out to California five months ago and told her everything she didn't know about anything. She was like, I know. And I go, what? What do you mean you know? She goes, I know, Riley. I've, I've told you every time that I've asked you about these things. <laughs> and I was like, so you're telling me like, I've been lying to myself for about seven months, huh? She's like, yeah, you've been living in some kind of fantasy world, lying to yourself, lying to me, and believing those lies. Nobody else has. And I was just, that was crazy, you know? That uh, I didn't think I was as bad as I, anybody else in this thing. Because uh, coming from treatment, like you see other people, I didn't think I was as bad or, or gone as far. I wasn't in denial still. I have a problem, right? But I was, man. I, I had a problem with bipolar. And I didn't, uh, I didn't understand that I used people, places, and things to make me feel better. And it went in cycles and I would lie to myself that everyone else believed my lies. <laughs> it's horrible. And you know, I lost a great relationship. And uh, my son, yeah, to CPS, and then we're fighting for custody back right now. So it was a bummer to have her leave, you know? But, sorry. It's okay. You're still young yet. Yeah. You have a long future ahead of you that you can straighten out, but I'm not saying it's easy. No, it's not. Uh, but now I'm in a position where I'm alone and I'm forced to look at me and I just gotta fucking do it one more time. You know what I mean? It's all I gotta do is just fucking do it one more time and give it everything I have because uh, I don't want to live out here homeless. You know what I mean? People may think that like it's a a choice. <laughs> no, it's the worst thing. Man. I don't like it out here at all. It's just hard, you know? It's yeah, hard. It's a horrible way to live. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'd rather be back in Washington with my baby's mom and not um, single <laughs> with a child, you know, that I can't see now. And owning our house. I don't want to live on the street away from those things, you know? But that's how uh, hard this shit is, you know? It's crazy. All right, Riley, thank you so much for sharing your story. Mm, you're welcome. And good luck. Thank you.